My most popular mini painting video by quite a way is the Cadian Command Squad and how all of the bits are essentially fun swappable parts to make interesting characters for Gaunt's Ghosts. No idea why, the uh, thumbnail is terrible and the title is boring, but people seem to like it. The important thing for this video is all of the parts that I didn't use in that video. So hi, I'm Edscar and I'm using the officer parts from the Cadian Command Squad to make another character from the Gaunsko series, Commissar Nehem Lud. The reason I realised this model could be used as a Commissar is the officer's great coat, but particularly this torso has a super ostentatious necklace which would work as more of that Commissar's uniform. A commenter on my last video said that this is called a gorget, go, gorget? Gorget. Gorget, and will nicely fill the role of the Commissar's refractor field. This commenter happens to be Jennifer, who is a long-standing member of the Gaunt's Ghost community, so I'm glad I've finally gotten her into a video, even if it's just as a comment. For some bonus continuity, I'm also throwing in the pointing arm and the map arm, all from the Cadian Command Squad kit. So I'm doubling down on the value of that specific kit just by accident here. I particularly wanted my LUD model to be not in an action pose. Whilst Gaunt is the hero of the piece and Hark is a total badass, LUD's skills lie elsewhere. Not to say that he can't handle himself in a fight, he certainly can. LUD is more than competent as a commissar specifically. The protégé of both Gaunt and Hark to various extents, he's able to learn from both and take the best from both. Lud assists with the officers, not leading directly but being an inspiring presence for both the officers and the troops under their command. That is exactly what a commissar is for. Now the last piece of this commissar's uniform for the model that is missing is the iconic red sash. Both Gaunt and my Hark model have them, and I went back and forth over a few bits from my bits box, and I ended up with this double ribbon piece from the old Bretonian Knights kit. But it doesn't quite complete the look by itself, and so I'll need some milliput to tie it all together. Sculpting is a fantastically useful tool for hobbyists like us, starting with some simple gap filling and then moving on to, to creating whole features for models, and before long you're having delusions of grandeur about making your whole entire models from scratch. Endless fun. Whilst doing the milliput cloak, I also assembled the rest of the model, as I would need some milliput for the Victoria Miniatures separate piece cloak. I've weighed in on cloaks a few times, it has been the main focus of my channel for over a year now, and I always prefer the one piece torso and cloak combo. They tend to work far better in keeping with the Tanith style cloaks. There are times when a separate piece cloak like this is required to maintain the gorget and the coat detail of the officer's torso. So a little more milliput to complete the around of the chest look of the Tanith cloaks and I have a model that is essentially ready for paint. And I'll start with the black uniform. But I wanted to mix things up just a little bit. Most of my Tanith army, including Hark, have the uniform highlighted into grey. Gaunt, however, had a subtle hint of blue to make just a tiny bit of visual distinction. With Lud, I had the idea to highlight into green instead, again for that subtle distinction of colour. This will still be very dark, and the black wash step in a moment will tie it all down as black visually, but with just a slightly more interesting highlight. And later on, the last step for the uniform will be to use a very dark black to paint in the shadows. My opinions on Lud have changed rather dramatically as the character has grown. He started young, fresh out of the scholar, no world experience type of character, and I somewhat wrote him off as a non-entity, someone who wouldn't make an impact. Abner had other ideas, however, writing scene after scene of Lud learning from Gaunt and then Hark, picking out not just hints and tricks, but a fundamental understanding of how to inspire, how to assist, and how to put the soldiers they work around into the best position to succeed and to punish when that runs out. That change was emphasised in microcosm during the lead up and action of the Salvation's Reach Assault. Lud had several interactions with these space marines assigned to that mission and at first he behaved as many in the setting would, 
timid in front of the angels of war, standing three meters in stature, wearing armor so comprehensive they are all but walking tanks. Well, Lud grew in confidence each time he spoke to them, and ultimately contradicted them during the fighting on the Reach. The Salvation's Reach mission was one of misdirection, to make it seem like certain Chaos factions were fighting others. And the Space Marines, naturally, wanted to hang around and kill more of the enemy. But Lud contradicted that. The more they stayed and fought, the more likely it would be reported as an Imperial assault, ruining the whole point of the mission. The Beakies yielded to the young Commissar's point and withdrew. As you can see, I've been underpainting various parts of the model. The Commissar's uniform has distinct bright red and yellow features, and both of these colours are notoriously thin and hard to paint with due to the common pigments available. I have found that the red I have over a light brown works really nicely, and with a second layer for some highlights is a fairly quick way of giving volume and definition. But the yellow, oh the yellow. An ancient model painting trick of underpainting with pink gives the yellow such a vibrant punch that I will have to bring it back down with some brown wash in a little bit, and that's with only a single layer of yellow. The last interesting detail for this model specifically is the map. And strangely, this is the second map I have painted this week, because I've also painted an artillery observer for bolt action. From the grey primer, I highlighted pretty simply into a lighter grey and then white, as the map's details will obscure most of that. Some green splotches representing trees went on first, and then some very faint lining of brown and blue to mark where a road and a river would be. The final detail came in an empty corner, and rather than just adding another patch of green for more trees, I tried to blackline in some text. Maybe it's a Munitorum information stamp, or some notes that Lud has taken. But with that done, all I need to do to finish the model is the usual steps of painting the cloak's camo pattern, and of course the skin. And we're done. My Lud model is complete, and he looks great by himself and stacks up nicely with the more experienced Commissar of Hark and Gaunt. Check the description below and make some comments about any suggestions for future characters. I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.